Nidodaf Ayin Aleph, a tremendous Mazel Tov to all of Klai Yisrael and a tremendous Siyum Mashas. We should be Zoycha to start Shas and finish Shas together. Welcome to the over 5,000 new subscribers to the Eid Minadav in the last 48 hours. It's a great opportunity to encourage your friends, spread the word, share the link, encourage people. You'll have a schos in every single person that joins the Eid Minadav. It's your schos. In addition, encourage your friends to start the Daf Yoimi. Every Daf they learn, you'll have a part of it. Beishamay hold that any person that dies, whether it's a man or a woman, they have a tuma of a zav or a nida, respectively. Initially, it was only somebody that was a nida or a zav at the time of their death that they had a tuma zav and nida. And therefore, if you want to use their clothing, you'd have to be toivel the clothing. But what happened was, zavim and nidas took it personally. They said, wait a minute, if a person is considered a zav and a nida after their death, then we're in a different category. It makes us feel different. So therefore, that they shouldn't have a busha, Bishamay or Geyser, that anybody that dies, regardless if they're a man or a woman, if they're a Zav and Anida or not a Zav and Anida, they have a Tuma like a Zav and Anida. And it's not because, perhaps, the Gemara thought that a woman sees Dam Nidos and a Zav sees Ziva out of fear. From the Malcham Ovis, when you see the Malcham Ovis, you see it, the concept by Esther Amalko, it says, Vatzchalchal HaMalko Bekirbo, when she found out that Mordechai is wearing Sak Ve'ever, she feared on the spot she became Anida. In fact, the Gemara, we learned that a person who's fearful, a woman who's hiding from the Goyim, does not see a Vesas Kavua. And the Gemara makes a distinction. If somebody is afraid, a sudden scare could cause Dam Nida. But somebody who has a constant fear, that actually causes the reverse effect on the body, and she stops seeing Nidos. But that's not the Pshat, because if that was the Pshat, then a Zav would not become Tomei at his death. The Halacha is that a Zav is different than a Zav and a Nida. If there's extracurricular activity, such as if he's jumping or he's fearful and that causes Ziva, that doesn't make him a Zav. And therefore, the Gemara says both the Zav and the Nida come from the same reason, and that's the Busha reason that we mentioned. Says the Mishnah, we know that Midari Raisa, in order for blood to be Metama Tumas Mace, Ba'ayal, or just by touching, you need a Revius Dam. Revius, like the amount you make on Kiddush, on Shabbos. According to the Tanakhama, if a woman has dam after she dies and it came out of her uterus, even the mashu, a small amount, is metama as nidadam. Because the Tanakama holds that the uterus itself creates tuma while she's alive. So all the dam that touched the uterus is tome tumas nida. And even though it emerges after her death, it's still metame. According to Yehuda, you need at least a revius dam. According to everybody, a woman who dies during childbirth and she sees Dam, that Dam is Dam Nida, every year led this is a Nida, and since it came out while she was alive, it's Metama Becholshu with a small amount. According to Rehoi, see, therefore, he says, this Dam is not Metama to Masmeis, but since it came, it emerged while she was alive. Say Rabbi Yehud and Chachamim, no, there's a concept called Dam Tevusa. There's a suffix if all of it came out while she was alive, all of it came out when she was dead, and therefore, Midra Banan, it's Metame. What is considered Dam Tevusa Midra Banan, according to Rehoi ben, ben Yaakov, it's even in a situation where the suffix is whether all of it came out while she was alive and all of it came out when she died. But Rabban say, no, since this is a suffix de Raisa and it's in Tumah, we have a concept in Shas. Anytime there's a suffix Tumah, if it's in Rosh Hashayachet, it's Tomei, and if it's Rosh Hashayachet, it's Tar. Therefore, the Gemara says that we're talking about a situation where there's a mix of certain blood that came out while she was alive, and there's definitely some of, some of the blood that came out while, after she died. And the question is, did the roiv come out while she was alive, or did the roiv come out when she died? If the body is laying on a bed, the bed has holes, and according to another shot, it shakes, it vibrates at the time of death, and there's a pool of blood, of tahar blood, that came out of the body while it was alive. According to Chachamim, there's a concept that each drop of blood that comes out of the dead body, although it should be metama tumas meis, since when it hits the puddle of tar blood, it's mevutal in the tar blood. But Rabbi Yudha says you can't be mavatal blood and blood. Rabbi Yudha holds in all of Shas, min b'minoi loy batal. If it's the same type of thing, it cannot be batal one and the other, and therefore the tummy blood does not become batal in the tahar blood. But Rabbi Yudha admits that if a person was cru- crucifixed on a tree, they nailed him to a tree while he was alive. So there's blood that came out of him while he was alive and some blood that came out of him after he died. And you see a pool of blood on the bottom. 
will assume that all of that blood is tahar blood. It came out while he was alive, and the blood on the blood that came out while he after he died remains stuck to the tree. Whereas in the bed, you don't have that concept because there's nothing to stick to. The bed has holes in it. A woman who gives birth to a zakhar, she's tummy for seven days, then goes to the mikvah, she's tar for 33 days, even if she sees dal. She gave birth in a keva, she's tummy for 14 days, and she's tar for 66 days. That's called Jesheves al-dam toyar. What is her halachic status during those 33 and 66 days? She's mutter to her husband. What about tuma? When it comes to tuma, she's considered a sheni. And tuma, if you're a rishon, you create a sheni. If you're a sheni, you create a shlishi. In other words, you could take truma and make that puzzle. A tfulas yoim, this woman, is considered a tfulas yoim aruch. Typically, a person who goes to the mikvah and is waiting until nightfall to become completely tar is a tful yoim. This woman has to wait 33 days in order to become completely tar, 66 days. During those 66 days, she's ashamed if she touches truma, it's metama, tahar, uh, truma. But later on, so they said initially that this woman, if she, like, for instance, is Cleaning a carbon pesach with chul and water, she's allowed to touch the kli because a sheni cannot create tumah to a kli. But she has to be careful not to touch the water, since the water is al taras although it's chulin, but you're dealing with gedusha over here, you're dealing with carbon pesach, you have to be careful, she could be metam that water. Later on, they said no. They made a chumra and they made a kula. They said, first of all, she's not considered a sheni, she's considered a rishan. A rishan is a stronger tumah, it could create even a sheni. Yet they said that if she touches the water, then it doesn't become tumah. And that goes according to Abishol. Reb Beishamai say that she's actually considered one step above a Rishon. She's an Av It says the Mishnah that according to everybody, this woman who's a Tful Asiyoyim Aruch, she can eat Meiser Sheni just like a Tful Yoyim. Now, how does she take Chala? This is a problem. She could touch Chala because she's only a Rishon, a Sheni, whatever she is, she's not Matama the Chala. Now, the, the, the problem is that once she's mafresh chal and she makes it into chala, she'll be metama the chala because the chala is truma and she could be metama that. So what she does is she cuts it, she puts it on the side in a kli, very close to her dough, and then she calls it chala and it becomes chala. Liquids that come out of a tuliyayim, for instance, her spittle or the dam, but the dam that she has is tahara dam because she's in day 33, uh, in the 33 and the 66 days of Tahara, that's considered like any liquids that she would have touched, and therefore they are tar. Now, since this is not a typical Tful Yom that goes to the mikvah that day and becomes tar that night, since there's a 33 day or 66 day wait, according to Bishamai, she must go to the mikvah again, and according to Basil, she does not have a wonderful day.